Mirabilandia is one of Italy's premier theme parks located right along the coast of Italy in Ravenna. Like most European parks, this one is very well themed. It has a total of seven roller coasters. That is soon to be eight when they add their Maurer Spike Coaster in 2019. But of course, no one has experienced that yet. I just visited in the summer of 2018. And this is a pretty neat park. That being said, out of all the parks that I went to along my European tour, this was probably my least favorite day of the entire trip. And really, it had nothing to do with the park. The problem was that we had basically two hours of sleep the night before, had a flight to Italy earlier that morning, and it was very hot at Mirabilandia, so we thought we were going to die. Pretty sure we were dehydrated. So it just made the experience not too enjoyable. So when I walked away from this park, I was feeling kind of eh about it. I was like, eh, it's okay. However, I'm going to try and take those circumstances out of the equation when reviewing this park because I don't think that that's necessarily fair to judge Mirabilandia because of stuff that we had purposely done earlier that day that would have impacted our visit otherwise had we not done them. But like most park reviews that I do, I'm going to try and look at all of the pros and cons with the park so you know what to expect when you go. First thing we noticed when we were pulling Pulling up to Mirabilandia is that they have this massive Ferris wheel. You can see this thing from miles. We were still reasonable distance away from the park, but we could identify it because of this huge Ferris wheel that they have in the center. So I'd say that that's probably the icon of the park. But actually, our first real experience with the park was kind of a downer. They wouldn't let us enter using our park tickets, which we had on our phones. We had to have them printed out. And of course, you have to pay to get them printed. So that was our first thing that we noticed. I'm not sure if it's like that all the time. My guess would be yes, but that definitely was not the best start to our day being told that we had to go and pay to get them printed when we couldn't just scan them in. But anyways, the main entrance to Mirabilandia is all pirate themed, which is kind of unusual. Grand, I didn't do a ton of research about this park before going in. I knew they had Ice Speed, I knew they had Katoon and Divertical, but that was about it. And so seeing everything pirate themed upon entry, I was like, oh, okay. It was very surprising. I mean, it's well done, but I can't think of any other park where the entry is themed to like pirates. So, I mean, I don't know, I think it's cool, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite, especially when the rest of the park is not themed to pirates. Like to me, the entry is supposed to kind of set the tone for the rest of the park. And this one kind of, as you're walking in, kind of gives off a different feel than the rest of it because you kind of have a variety of different lands. Ice speed is kind of in your like fast car section. Of course, there's a Wild West like every other park in Europe. There's even a dinosaur area. So the entire park is not themed to pirates. Now, of course, this is a park review, so I'm not going to go in talking about the roller coasters and rating them specifically. But one thing I do want to talk about is that the coasters actually have a really cool system. It will tell you how many people need to go into the station. So they keep the stations empty, at least for the most part. We really saw this the case with high speed, but it'll say, okay, 20 people here. And so you'll just one by one enter in through the turnstiles. And then when it hits the last number, it won't let anyone else through. Ice Speed also has a separate line for the front row. So naturally that's going to be slower. I had some associates who got mad at me if you have your phone or any sort of camera out in the station for the coaster. I'm not entirely sure why, but it was a little weird. So I'd say take note of that. While we're talking about this, and this doesn't have anything to do with the coaster ride experiences, that Ice Speed does go down a lot. So so I'd say make sure to ride that while you can because there were multiple times throughout the day when we tried to ride it but weren't able to. That was naturally the first ride that we went to when we got to the park and right when we were close to riding it went down. And so actually Divertical was our first ride which is definitely like the GP ride here like it's the most popular ride at least out of the rides that we saw that day at the longest line. Maybe because it was hot, but I kind of got the vibe that that was the fan favorite. Now, if I had to use one word to describe this park, I would probably use the word quirky because Mirabilandia is a little strange, but it's cool. Exhibit A would be the theming. I talked a little about how you enter through the pirate area. There's one particular section that I think is just so bizarre, and it's the kids area. This kids area is so weird. So they have a kid coaster, right? It is themed to vegetables. So there's like carrots and like eggplants everywhere. It's like a garden, I guess. And they also have this spinning house ride. I've never seen anything like that. It is crazy. I kind of wanted to do it. Oh, and there's a baby log flume. I've never seen a baby log flume before until here. When I say like baby log flume, I mean like literally this thing is so freaking small. 
Like I've seen smaller log flumes, but not this small. And actually while we're talking about that small tiny log flume, this park just in general has a lot of water rides. I mean, to be fair, it was really hot when we went. So if it's like that all the time, I could definitely see why. Something that I thought was cool is that their log flume has a double down and it is themed to cars, not logs. They are cars going down the double down drop. Talk about unique. But as a result of having so many different water attractions, you get a lot of people walking around in bathing suits, even when they're not doing water rides. And if you're not from Europe, just note that sometimes their bathing suits can be kind of small or uh, minimal, like Speedos and things like that. So that was interesting. You don't really get that in America. And while I'm kind of talking about the public, one thing that we saw was that line cutting was kind of an issue. We saw on multiple occasions, and I kind of got the vibe that that was okay here, that like the culture that line cutting wasn't anything bad, which we got that same vibe in Spain, but not any of the other countries, just Italy and Spain. Talking a little bit about the food, at Mirabellandia, it's pretty generic. They have a McDonald's, but I mean, when you're in Italy, you're kind of expecting like, you know, cultural food. No, it's it's like American, like classic theme park food. You know, your burgers and fries, pizza and whatnot. Although I guess pizza is Italian, sort of. So that's something maybe. I know we weren't really impressed by it. So I've talked about some of the attractions. I've talked about some of the people that go here. To just kind of wrap things up, talking about the park as a whole, I thought the layout was kind of confusing. If you watched the vlog we did from Mirabellanda, we actually got lost in the middle of it because we didn't know where we were going. We thought the path led this way, but then it turns out it didn't. There are signs everywhere kind of pointing you, okay, go this way for this attraction. So that's definitely helpful. But I would say that a lot of the paths were kind of like tucked away and there were some dead ends. And that's coming from someone that didn't look at the park map before he went at all so I knew nothing about where any of the rides were so I just walked in and was like okay I don't know where I'm going but I think if I ever went again I would probably know th where I'm at a bit better you know after I was there for a few hours I definitely got a better feel for the layout but as a first timer I got a little confused and maybe that's partially because there's so many trees so you can't really see too much of the rest of the park if you're on one end you can't really see the other side which is cool and I like that I mean it shows that it's pretty that they care about their landscape and theming just in general. I mean, there's so much theming around and it's all well done. The area by Katoon looks like very South American and aztec -y. Even some of their smaller rides have theming. They have a wild mouse called Gold Digger, which is one of the few L&T wild mouse coasters. If you haven't ridden one of these things, they are so aggressive. They're probably the most aggressive wild mouse coasters ever. And they also have a power coaster called Rexplorer. Whether you call it a coaster or not, it kind of goes through some tunnels, pretty cool. And then they also have a Mobius coaster called Master Tai. We didn't know it was a Mobius, so we just got in line and we figured we were getting in line for like the right side and then it went around both times. We were like, oh, the other thing was that the coaster was running with VR. We did not do it because we didn't care, but that was definitely different to see that we are over here in Italy and we are used to VR rides everywhere and they had one. But like I said, I think Divertical is kind of the fan favorite here. When we went, Katoon didn't really have much of a line. iSpeed had a line, but only because of capacity and it broke down a lot. But overall, I'd say it's a pretty solid park. I wouldn't call it one of Europe's best theme parks. Out of the 22 parks we went to in Europe, I'd probably put it on the lower end of the spectrum. And that's not because of our experience throughout the day, like I mentioned earlier with having a flight earlier that day. Just looking at the park itself and the rides and attractions, policies, operations, things like that, I'd probably put it towards the bottom. I think in terms of Italian theme parks, Gardaland is definitely the superior park. And if you want to hear about Gardaland, make sure to stay tuned for that review because here at Coaster Studios, we're reviewing all of the theme parks that we went to around Europe. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button where you can stay tuned for more. And if you've been to Mirabellandia, be sure to let me know down in the comments below if you think that what I said was accurate, if you think I missed anything, you can let me know. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.